All right, guys, we have got something truly special here today and really, I'm almost speechless. And I've been really kind of wrestling with how to talk about this because it's not really like, uh, I mean, it's a review, it's an overview, it's a show and tell, it's a, it's a, a dirk discussion, kind of. This is my first time with a Todd Rexford. This is the Singularity C model. Um, and the C is because this is one that is done on a CNC. And that takes nothing away from anything. Like it, it just really takes nothing away from nothing. I've heard a lot of people talk about CNC uh, being easy, being fake. It's not really true handmade customs. Uh, I disagree. When's the last time you ran a CNC machine? When's the last time you you knew how to program it? There is nothing less custom about this because there's a CNC involved. It is still amazing. And there's just something about this knife. I've handled a lot of knives, right? I've had my channel for four years at the time of filming and I've done a video every day. So just do the math and I've handled a lot of knives. And that doesn't include all the knives I've handled at shows and different events and things like that, that I just have not gotten the opportunity to film. This is, un I don't wanna say it's unlike any other knife, but there's a few knives and, and we'll talk more about this one in a second, but there's a few knives in my collection that stand out as unique, as something special, something that you can't really describe as to why it's different. And this is, this is in that category. The action is amazing. As, as light as I can do the flipper tab, it's going to open, even this way, right? Where there's extra, it takes extra oomph on the blade. That's as light as I can pull the trigger, so to speak. And this is up there. This is an expensive knife. And I'm honored that Tristan sent this to me, okay? I bought, and if you saw my unboxing a few you know, days ago, I bought the King Battle, which is... It looks expensive, and trust me, trust me, it's expensive. This one is slightly less expensive, and I talked about that on the unboxing video as well. This one stands out because it's just special and unique, but this one doesn't really stand out in the way that it's unusual, and it's um, the action is so much different than other things. Something that else that stands out along this line of this Rexford would be the VC Edge interface. One of the most ingenuitive or innovative knives I've ever felt or ever handled. Okay, mostly carbon fiber, um, Timascus lock bar. This is a full dress, super crazy custom that Jason, the owner of VC Edge, and I came up with. And the action is something I can't describe. And it weighs in at like 1.5 ounces. Crazy unique. The other one that kind of comes to mind is the Shark Nivco Ryu. The tolerances are amazing. This one was done without a CNC back before Edison bought a CNC. But the action is something, again, I can't describe. Anybody that handles this tells me the same thing. It just, it flips different than every other knife. So it's in that special, unique category. And lastly, I think in my collection is the Tim Galleon. This came to me via Jim Skelton. I was going to just film it, send it on to Recon 1 to sell. I flipped it that first time after unboxing it, and there was no way. I could send it off to be sold. So I've had 
some really expensive knives through the channel. And I own a lot of expensive knives. And this is in that unique, crazy cool category. The action is just amazing. Little bit more drop shut than I typically like, for sure. But it very infrequently bounces on the bottom. So the action is tuned just perfectly. So I'm not going to go into all of the specs and details, um, but I'm going to give you the general information. Um, I don't know a lot about Todd Rexford either, so forgive me if I get anything wrong. I am going to reach out to him and see if I can get him on the EDC hour with Dirk and Alex, because I think he'd be a great guy to sit and talk with for an hour and really get some people to ask questions um, and interact with him, I think would be super cool. So he's been making knives for four or five years, I think, three to three to five years. And he makes crazy customs like this, super high end. Um, as I was getting ready to film this, I realized that I have done one other Rexford before uh, that Alex has, it's the Rexford Rut, the uh, Rexford Utility Tool, I think is what they call it. It's a box cutter. It's, you know, yay big with a standard box cutting razor blade in there that you can slide in and out. I think it's got a bottle opener, uh, maybe a screwdriver, a pry bar, things like that. Super cool. That's like 300 bucks. These are close to 10 grand. A lot of his stuff is in that five plus range and they go up. I've seen some over 25 grand. Yes, $25,000 for a pocket knife. You are probably thinking to yourself, that's ridiculous. Those of you that are collectors, think back. I still remember the exact moment and conversation when I told myself I would never buy a knife over $500. This is considerably more than $5,000. I don't know that I carry anything, generally speaking, in my world today that's under $500. So $25,000 for a knife is not out of the realm of possibilities for me. I've already breached that 10,000 range. This one is under 10,000, okay? So altogether, you have a four and a half inch closed knife, titanium scales. CPM 154 blade steel, titanium backspacer, titanium clip, all wonderfully and beautifully milled. Your eight, just a hair over eight, eight and a sixteenth ish, excuse me, overall, with a 3.6 inch blade. This one weighs in at 4.2 ounces. It disappears in your pocket. It's got a small profile. Um, here it is next to the Spyderco Delica, just for size comparisons, or the VC Edge interface, which also has a 3.6 inch blade. I cannot find anything wrong with this knife whatsoever. It is an inset liner lock. Let's go ahead and zoom back in and get a close up look of everything now. Hand rub satin finish on the blade. Crazy pivot. This is a proprietary hexagonal geometric uh, pivot system with proprietary bearings as well. Nice milling if it will focus with some, you know, uh, in the centers of this milling, it's kind of protrudes up. I think that gives it a nice little detail. 3D milled pocket clip that works really well in the pocket. I would almost like, if I'm going to nitpick, slight more of a ramp to exit the pocket. However, this works great. Again, the hexagonal geometric pivot collar on this side. Inset liner lock. 
with milling all over the place on the inside, on the show side. I don't think there's any milling on the lock side. There is up at the top. I like the fact that the backspacer kind of comes to a point there and drops down. So it kind of rounds down. I like that little detail. Like I said, the action is amazing. I love where he puts the blade steel. It's just etched in right there. I think that's just a cool spot to hide it. You don't see it when it's open and you barely notice it when it's closed. I had to look. Has a wonderful sound. Put it up here next to the mic. So it's a very satisfying knife to handle, fondle, and whatnot. This is one of Tristan's, he has several Rexford knives at this point, and he is always searching for higher and higher end ones. This one might be for sale. It's probably going to be used to trade for a higher end Rexford, kind of a trade bait, if you will. So here it is next to the VC Edge interface. At 3.66 inch blade, this one's at 3.6. So slightly, slightly smaller. Again, just to give a few size comparisons. These are all very different price ranges, but all north of, well, this one was 33-ish. These are really hot right now and going for crazy prices, six, 7,000. Rexford is very hot right now also. I did not know anything about him maybe a year ago other than that, you know, small box cutter thing that Alex sent me, but I didn't realize who he was and what he was. This thing is just a beast. It's over, a, it's a four and a quarter inch blade if I'm not mistaken. And because I can, and because I love the King battle, that is now one of the crown jewels of my personal collection. Here it is with this, and this is a four and a quarter inch blade. Different, but similar. Now, Todd also does um, some fixed blades, and he's gotten into doing a bunch of intricate inlays with different materials, which look really great. The other thing he's super well known for is the hot hammered look. And I'll try to put a, a couple of pictures of some hot hammered knives up here in the corner. I, I don't know if I love the hot hammered look yet. I need to see one in person. From pictures and looking online, it's, it's, it doesn't draw me in right away. But Tristan has several handmade customs, just to make a distinction, um, that are the hot hammered finish. So I can't wait to be down in Southern California next time to get with Tristan and be able to see the hot hammered versions. There is a singular singularity minus the C that Todd makes by hand. And those are in the hot hammered finish and some, some not hot hammered finish, just more standard titanium um, mill type scales. I would recommend anybody it's into the higher end knives. Now, this is not going to be for your Delica guys. You affordable guys, you budget guys, nothing wrong with that. I have the budget knives. This is one of my budget knives that might be one of my favorites. Here's the Kubi that is currently, currently my favorite budget knife. I love my budget knives. But what do I carry on a daily basis? I carry the higher end knives. That's just who I am. It's what I carry these days. So for you budget guys, this is not for you. But the guys into higher end knives, you need to do yourself a favor and check out Todd Rexford. 
I'll put a link to his website, Instagram and stuff down below because I think if you don't know about him, you should. Like I didn't know a lot and I probably still don't know a lot other than I know that I'm grateful that Tristan sent this to loan me, but I'm also kind of cussing him behind my beneath my breath because I wish I could just keep this and send him cash rather than sending this back in the mail. That's how much I like this one. If I had not have just bought and spent all my money on this guy, um, I would have taken the money I spent here and put it here instead for whatever that's worth to you guys. I, that's how much I like this thing. I would, this would be a total carry knife. I mean, I know that Tristan isn't really carrying this because he's trying to keep it pristine for either a sale or a trade. But this, I think, is a perfect platform for a daily carry. It's crazy sharp. Tristan said, be very careful when you open it. I did measure, and it's 0 .005 behind the edge. This thing is crazy sharp. Like, nuts. So, yeah, guys. Let me know your thoughts. If you own a Rexford, comment down below which one you own. Uh, my buddy Eric has one up in Utah that he is looking to sell or was looking to sell or whatever. Um, it's a more of an entry level version. I like this one a heck of a lot better. And nothing bad about the entry level version. There's just something about this guy that, yeah, I'd buy in a heartbeat if I didn't just spend a bunch of money on the King Battle. So... Thanks for watching, guys. I know this kind of rambled for a guy who was speechless. Um, I had a lot to say, maybe, or I rambled quite a bit. So, hey, in the comments, just put ramble if you've made it this far. I would appreciate it. It really tells me that you're listening and you care. So let me know. Thanks, guys.